I love Christian, he was a constantly entertaining performer who really never got his due despite winning the WWE title. Edge's fake brother could wrestle, talk and be a goof if you wanted him to, and yet he never received a proper push or at least not one he felt deserving of. He was an underrated talent who is still fondly remembered because of the memories he left us with. With that said, there are still things out there that WWE would prefer you didn't bring up as and when the conversation heads in such a direction. It just doesn't work for them. So as ever, let's ignore that entirely. Sorry WWE. I'm Simon from What Culture, and this is 10 Things WWE Wants You To Forget About Christian. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10, TNA booked him as a top guy first. It's not easy to leave the WWE. Even if you're not happy with your spot, there's still a level of comfort there and, of course, the money. WWE plays pretty well, all things considered. It, of course, can be a good move, though. Just look at the likes of Cody Rhodes and even CM Punk. They're doing all right. And before both of those was Christian. Asking for his release in 2005, Christian surfaced in TNA as Christian Cage, the name he used on the indies, and instantly became a heavy hitter. Over the next two to three years, he was presented as a main event level star, and he won the world title twice. He scrapped with Jeff Jarrett, Sting, AJ Styles, and Kurt Angle and proved along the way what WWE was missing out on. And Vince and friends might not like to admit it, but TNA did a better job of capitalizing on Christian's skills than they did at any point after splitting from Edge in 2001. That run caught WWE's eye and he came back, However, number 9, his comeback was really bland. On the 10th of February 2009 episode of ECW, Todd Grisham let us know that Christian was back. That was a big deal, but you wouldn't have known it from Todd's tone of voice. The line was delivered with such a lack of energy that those caring about Christian's WWE comeback must have wondered if WWE actually gave two hoots. The fact it happened on third tier programming like ECW didn't help. It wasn't the start the man deserved. There's that word again. People didn't want to see Christian in this position. They wanted to see him back in the mix with old friends like Edge, the Hardy Boys, and Chris Jericho on Raw and SmackDown. Analyzing the rosters for all three shows back then, and ECW was the worst place he could have ended up. Things could have been so different had WWE gone along with their original plans, which we're about to get to, because that was far more fitting of the man. This is how it went down, and I'm still sad about it. Number 8, his Raw Rumble 2000 moment was scrapped. According to the Wrestling Observer, it was Christian who was supposed to cost Jeff Hardy the WWE title at the 2009 Raw Rumble. By by being inserted immediately into such a high-profile feud, he'd have looked like a big deal. For some reason, WWE changed their minds. A few say it was because it got leaked beforehand, and others say thoughts just changed. Instead, though, Matt Hardy would turn heel by bashing his brother, and that meant no Christian. Fans chanting his name in Detroit's Joe Louis Arena that night were left disappointed, even if this was heading to a Matt vs. Jeff feud at WrestleMania 25. Paper sounded pretty good. It really was a missed opportunity given everyone that was involved, and the program between the Hardys didn't work out well at all. Given that Christian ended up on ECW and WWE neglected to give him a comeback moment at all, well, that just sucks. Number 7, Edge and Christian used to be brothers. Remember earlier when I said Christian was Edge's fake brother? Well, he was. For a while. Then one day, WWE decided that shouldn't be the case anymore, and they just became really good friends. That's not the story when they both burst onto the scene in the late 90s. It's never been to explain to anyone, because why would it? We don't need to have consistency in our wrestling. That's really overrated. This happened long before either one retired too. Even before Edge walked away in 2011, WWE announcers stopped referring to them as siblings. To anyone watching since they were part of the brood, it's hard to understand. You can't just decide people aren't family, even in the world of WWE. Would we all just be cool? if on SmackDown Jimmy and Jay Uso went, uh, actually, it's all lies. And I know they're real brothers, but that's not the point. Stick to it and don't muck around. Number six, he almost became a parody of The Rock. This is always bad. If someone is The Rock and The Rock was The Rock, don't try and make them the new Rock or any kind of Rock. It's like trying to make Roman Reigns the new John Cena. Don't. Just let John Cena be John Cena and let Roman Reigns be Roman Reigns. This is even more true when someone can already talk, and that was Christian through and through. He knew what he was doing, and yet in 2003, the Canadian one was told to cut his hair, start dressing like the Great One, and refer to himself as The Lock. That wasn't just a terrible pun either, it was meant that Christian was a lock to win when he entered the ring. So I don't know what happened to the water in Stanford at this time, but it must have been awful, because this is terrible. The idea was scrapped when Christian told officials he didn't want to cut his hair at that point, and WWE decided to find something else for him to do. Armed with his wit on the microphone and affinity with the live crowd, even as a heel, Christian might have been able to make this work. But he didn't want to try, and I can't blame him. Number 5, he was used as a TNA bargaining chip. The deal was simple. WWE would get permission from TNA to use Ric Flair at the 2012 Hall of Fame ceremony if Dixie Carter and company got something in return. That ended up being a one-off appearance by Christian at Slammiversary in June to announce the number one moment in TNA history fans had been voting on. 
and seemed like a fair trade. WWE didn't bother to advertise that Christian would be heading to TNA because of course, and they blatantly disregarded the promotion's wishes in the sense that they said they wouldn't use flair in advertising and then plastered him all over TV in the lead up to his four horsemen induction. In the process, Christian ended up being used as a make weight for a one-sided deal and he later said in interviews he didn't really want to do this. Unfortunately, WWE didn't give him the choice, it was their deal and he had to do what he was told just so they could get Flair in the Hall of Fame again. Number 4. WWE ruined the emotion in his first world title win Standing atop a ladder at Extreme Rules 2011, Christian looked like he was losing his mind as he clutched the world heavyweight title in his hands. Below Edge glanced up with tears filling his eyes, and this was a moment to save you. Filling in for the retired Edge against Alberto Del Rio was a chance for Christian to show WWE that he belonged at the top of the card, which he did. The match was awesome too, and fans went wild when Christian pulled down the belt and celebrated with his buddy. The next week, however, Randy Orton was booked to obliterate Christian's elation and beat him for the title. As if that wasn't depressing enough, WWE turned him heel and cast Christian as a desperate cheat who would use any trick in the book to beat Orton. Though the pair had a fun feud, it's notable that WWE chose to ruin what should have been one of the year's most emotional babyface moments. Also, no one wanted to boo the man. That's always a recipe for disaster. Number 3. He's never been given a proper send-off In March 2014, Christian suffered a nasty concussion during a fatal four-way match with Alberto Del Rio, Sheamus, and Dolph Ziggler. His planned IC title challenge against Big E was shelved, so was Christian. Fans wondered when he ever recover and come back, and then he never really did. All fans on TV had to go on was Jerry Lawler suddenly referring to Christian as retired during a guest host spot with Edge on Raw in December. This was news to anyone who didn't spend hours trawling news sites, and nothing became clear until WWE released Christian from his talent contract in 2016. Since then, he's been back a few times in a non-wrestling role and even hosted The Peep Show, but couldn't we have done more than this? There's never been a sense of closure, and that seems unfair on behalf of WWE. He earned a proper goodbye, so why don't we give him one? Number 2. Vince McMahon wanted to cover his face On a flight to Sheffield, England, in 2005, McMahon disclosed to his writing squad that he thought Christian looked ratty. The confused creative team then sat and listened as Vince explained his wish to censor Christian's face whenever he appeared on TV. I am not making this up. To better illustrate this point, the boss apparently brought up the William Kennedy Smith rape trial of the 90s and said he wanted to use the same blue dot Smith's accuser had used when testifying in court on TV. And no one just shot this down straight away is anyone's guess. Alex Greenfield, then a member of the creative team, said during an interview with the Fight Network that Vince soon forgot about the idea and moved on. That's a blessing, because hearing from the company you work for that you're too ratty for the cameras wouldn't have been a fun moment for Christian or us. Number 1. You should be in the Hall of Fame already Kid Rock, Drew Carey, and Donald Trump are all in the WWE Hall of Fame. Christian, a man who won multiple world tag team and IC titles over almost 20 years, is not. That bemused look he wore at the 2018 Hall of Fame ceremony when helping induct the Dudley Boys with Edge said it all. Christian, and me, must be baffled that he hasn't been considered yet. This goes hand in hand with a previous point about Christian never getting a proper send off. Why not? He's been such an important part of some of WWE's biggest moments like TLC and that first tag team ladder war with the Hardys. So it doesn't make sense. This should happen sooner rather than later. The man earned it. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below and if you're looking for more content like this then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though. But it might be.